I wanted to talk about a topic that doesn't seem like it would be that important, and that is indenting code. Within Python, your intention in terms of the logic of your program is closely tied to your indenting. If you don't indent properly, it's really going to cause problems with your code, and you could very well end up with some logic errors. So on the screen, you see a, a, a program that will evaluate somebody's grade at the end of the semester. If I go ahead and run this, let's suppose the person at the end of the semester gets 0.75. That is a 75%. And if we run this, you'll see that the grade is a C, as you would expect. And the logic of the code is, first we prompt the user to enter their score. Then we, uh, we say if the score is greater than 0.9, which of course it is not, so that does not succeed. We go to line 6. We ask if the student, uh, or I'm sorry, if the score is then greater than 0.8, and of course it is not. So then we jump down to line 8. Uh, the score is, of course, 0.75, so it is greater than 0.7. That succeeds. We assign the grade to uh, C. We skip the rest of the other part of the if statement, and we run down and down to line 15, and it executes and prints the result. So that's the logic of how the code occurs. But let's suppose we want to actually send another message to the student, to a student who got the grade of an F. So let's, let's say print I'm sorry you didn't do well. Please come and see me. Okay, something like that. Now let's put this way over in the left margin. Let's don't indent it, but let's leave it right there. So it still is under the else statement, but let's run it there. So let's run this again. We run the code. Let's say we tried 0.75. And you'll notice it says 0.75, but it says, I'm sorry you didn't do well. Please come and see me with a score of 0.75. Let's run it again. This time, let's suppose the student did very well. Let's say 0.95. And again, it says, I'm sorry you didn't do well. Please come and see me. This is obviously not the logic that we want. We only want to print the message if the student failed the class. So why did that happen? Well, the indenting here makes, by indenting line 14 from here to here, it makes it a part of the block in the else statement. In other words, the print statement when it's indented will only print if the else statement fires. And that is if all of the conditional is above it on lines 4, 6, 8, and 10 are false, then line 12 will execute. By indenting the print statement, you make it part of the else statement. If you don't imprint, indent the print statement, whether or not it is the line directly above or below this doesn't matter. Um, in other words, if you move it down here, logically, that line is exactly the same logically as this line. So. In this situation, since it is not now part of the if statement because it is not indented, line 14 will execute every time the program runs, just like line 16. Okay, Because they're not indented, both 14 and 16 will run every time, every time the code executes. The number of spaces that you use for an indent is incredibly important because Python standardizes on four spaces. There are times, actually, if you don't use a consistent number of spaces, it will actually cause a syntax error because Python isn't really sure what you're doing. Um, also, most situations you're programming not just for yourself, but in along with other people. So if you're working in a company, for example, your code uh, is going to be combined with other people's code. If you don't use the same standard as they do, again, you could cause an error in the system simply because you're not using the same number of spaces. I know it seems ridiculous, but it actually is true. Python puts a lot of stock in spaces, and so please make sure that you use four spaces. For the most part, by the way, if you're using Visual Studio, if you hit the Tab key, it will automatically insert four spaces. So the best way to handle indenting is simply to use the Tab key.